All right, for today's video review, we're gonna be taking a look at Transformers Beast Wars Mega Class Baboom. Uh, yeah, this is one of those Beast Wars figures that I have not had for the longest time, but I uh, recently found it on eBay for a pretty decent price. And uh, yeah, he's a really cool figure. Um, he's a Mega Class, which is basically equivalent to the Voyagers of today. I mean, I guess like size-wise, it's he's a little bit close to like a leader of today just because of how figures have gotten smaller throughout the years. But it was at the time the, uh, the next size class up above the sort of like deluxe uh, stand-ins. I can't remember. I think that they were called deluxes back then as well. But either way, he turns into a, a, a baboon here. Really actually looks a bit more like a mandrel than, than a baboon, which is a little bit unfortunate considering his name is a pun off of a baboon. Baboom. Um, but this figure is also known as Apache because that was his character. That was uh, the um, the character in Beast Wars the second that uses used this mold. And it was basically the same toy, like both the, the American and the Japanese release. I don't know there's probably like some slight differences but he wasn't one of the ones that had like a complete sort of like you know color overhaul or anything kind of similar to Clawjaw like Clawjaw and Scuba are essentially the same toy um but yeah so Apache Baboom whatever you want to call him I prefer Baboom just because I think it's one of the funnier sort of like stupid Beast Wars pun names um but eh, you know whatever um but yeah though he's technically a baboon I'm pretty sure baboons have like longer tails and mandrels have little tails like this so it, it really does look more like a mandrel than a baboon but eh whatever um it, either way it's a it's a pretty good looking mode here I've also seen people displaying it like this but that's definitely not the way that baboons knees go so I, I always display it you know like this and you have to have it kind of like you know bent up at the knee like that so it can actually stand up properly but it's a it's a pretty decent baboon mode honestly uh in terms of articulation there's nothing really at the head except for one gimmick which i'll get to in a bit uh the arms just end up becoming the robot mode arms so there's a, a ball joint at the shoulder which has a pretty decent uh you know rotation and movement there uh he's got a bicep rotation which is pretty tight on mine uh about that much bend at the uh knee elbow whatever you call it in this mode so less than 90 uh, and then the wrists are on ball joints so they can rotate around and kind of uh, hinge up and down like that and then for the back legs here these will just end up becoming the robot mode legs he's very simple in that way like arms become arms and legs become legs um but there's a ball joint at the hips here so they can rotate forward and back and a little bit out to the side he's got a thigh swivel uh, the knee can only bend up about that much because it, you know, kind of goes the other way in robot mode. And then the uh, the foot itself can hinge all the way back and forth. Uh, and then the other sort of bit of articulation with him is he has this fun gimmick where um, you see his face here. He's got his eyes like mostly squinted closed. If you take the, uh, the right ear here, his right, uh, and you push it in. <laughs> his eyes kind of pop open and his, his jaw opens like that now the uh the original figure i mean this is the original figure but um the figure originally did come with a gun and a uh, and a couple of missiles um i did not get that with this one on the ebay listing just because it was a lot easier to find a cheap one without the accessories but um the gun actually does store inside there you can kind of i don't know if you can see it but there is a, a like a hole inside his mouth there yeah you can kind of see it that the gun slides into and then you're supposed to slide it forward with this lever here so he opens his mouth and then the gun actually sticks out of his mouth and can fire which is a uh, pretty cool and then those two holes on the side there which you definitely can't see yeah yeah a little bit um those are where the uh the missiles could store which is super cool that it actually had completely you know integrated unobtrusive weapon storage i would like to track down that gun at some point but you know I, I was able to get this guy for under twenty dollars without the gun, and you know it's hard to find him uh, for any you know around that price with the gun. So I, I'm still happy that I bought it this way, but it definitely it is an accessory that I would like to have since it actually has a place to go in both modes, which is not always the case even with a lot of modern figures. But uh, yeah, no, pretty good uh, baboon or mandrel mode, whichever <laughs> you'd prefer to call it. I do like the the color here. There are a couple of places where it's like you know this blue is slightly different than this blue, but it. it all still works uh in terms of comparisons in this mode just for a standard one here he is with uh with kingdom sideswipe just so you can see what he looks like with an average size deluxe there 
Uh, here he is with the original Ultra class, uh, Optimus Primal from the Beast Wars line. So you can see it, basically the idea of Voyager leader class, although, you know, both are bigger than current leaders, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I think that they look pretty good together. Uh, he's definitely a bit chunkier and has more gimmicks, but still nice um, for a modern Beast Wars figure, especially, you know, since he's also kind of as used as a character for the Beast Wars the second uh, toy line figures. Uh, here he is with the modern update of Lyo Convoy, and I think they look pretty good together. Obviously, that's kind of always been the thing about uh, Baboom here, is that he doesn't really, like, scale all that well with other figures, and, you know, like, the scaling in Beast Wars was kind of all over the place anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Like, they all turn into animals that are slightly the wrong size, which it has kind of always been canon, like, especially if you look at, like, you know, Optimus Primal and Megatron with each other in their beast modes. It's like, yeah, that they're not meant to scale with actual gorillas and Tyrannosaurus Rexes. But it, it would be nice to get a version of Baboom sometime that is maybe a bit smaller. Because, like, I don't need him to actually, you know, because, like, actual, uh, you know, uh, mandrels or baboons are really tiny. But having him be bigger than a lot of the figures like Lions, I think, is a little bit odd. But eh, whatever, they, it can really scale how it needs to, but that's what they look like together. And then last but not least, for another sort of like mandrel or baboon comparison, here he is with Bantor, who's, I suppose, only half half that, since he's also part tiger, but, you know, it's the, uh, the only other one we've gotten, to the best of my knowledge, and that's what they look like together. But yeah, to get onto transformation, um, he does have a weird sort of third mode, which actually has a surprising amount of dedicated tooling for it. So I guess we'll we'll look at that first, but then I think I'll want to go back to baboon mode to show the transformation just from here to robot mode, just because like it, it, it usually you skip that mode because it's really strange. And the transformation between this mode and robot mode is actually simpler in terms of in, rather than like, you know, doing all the extra transformation bits for this third mode. But yeah, he does have this weird sort of like weaponized platform mode where uh, you're supposed to kind of unhook him at the waist here. And this is also where his uh, his maximal rub symbol is kind of hidden away in, in every single mode, but you can't really get it to work right now, but that's where it's supposed to be. Um, and then you want to take the uh, the back legs. Uh, no, I guess they stay down. I can't remember. But um, you want to take these panels here and just untab them. There's just a, a hole right here that goes into a peg right there. You just bring them out like this. And then on these armatures, uh, there's a hinge right here, which will fold out to the side, just like this, like that. And then what do we want to do? Uh, we want to bring the... Uh, we want to like bring this whole section around like this. Yeah, there we go. All right, we want to rotate around the waist. I don't really go to this mode all that often just because it's kind of weird. And then you want to take this entire bit and slide it down, not all the way, but just enough that this hole right here will correspond with the uh, the tab that hooked it in to the, uh, to the waist there. Um, so which is most of the way down, but not all of the way. So you want to hook that into place and make sure this kind of sits out flat like this. And you can take the baboon head and just kind of fold it to the back here like that. Leave the uh, the robot mode arms uh, and baboon mode arms, I guess, just kind of down out to the side. Uh, you want to take these bits and rotate them around like this. So they're facing forward and then take these flaps and fold them out to the side like that. And then it's already done it on this side, but there's a little slider here that just extends out these... Uh, these guns so they're facing forward and then uh, you can do this either way um i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be with the the feet the other way like you're supposed to rotate around the legs and then have the feet sitting upside down for this mode which is also how it is in a robot mode but it, it kind of works either way if you just wanted the uh you know the feet to remain on the ground and then i've also seen it with these rotated around the other way it, again it does not really matter um you can do it whatever way uh you want uh, i guess that does put slightly more like techie detail on the outside but but, it, you know, it, it kind of is whatever. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, he has this weird little, like, platform mode, which, granted, is not quite complete without the gun, because this is where the gun stores, so you'd want the gun and the missiles to be facing forward in this mode to make it a little bit more weaponized. But uh, that whole, like, folding in half thing and the waist coming unlocked, uh, that's just for this mode. And also, he does have a separate little head down here that's, like, on a little hinge again just for this mode which is super strange because it's like you kind of expect this sort of thing out of like beast wars neo figures but he was in like the like the first year of the beast wars toy line so it's really weird maybe they were just like experimenting around with things like you could take a a basic class figure and kind of like stand it up there on a platform if you want but it just kind of becomes this like weird alien techie robo platform animal thing and 
I don't really like it. I mean, it, it does have a little bit more intention to it than like a lot of, you know, like the Beast Wars Neo weaponized modes. Like he does have these separate dedicated guns here just for this mode, this dedicated head, and then all of that, you know, tooling to accommodate the transformation. I'm just not totally sure what the intention was with this, but this exists if you if you want to do it. Um, I mean, there's no avoiding the extra head since it does just kind of end up sitting behind his robot mode head in robot mode, which is a little bit unfortunate, but yeah that that's what this is um i'm gonna bring it back to uh to baboon i'm not bothering doing comparisons in this mode but i'm gonna bring it back to the baboon mode real quick just because i like i said i feel like the uh the transformation um from you know beast mode straight to robot mode is uh is more indicative of what you'd actually be doing when using this toy most of the time because i don't know about you but I usually just tend to ignore that mode entirely and just, you know, transform him from beast to robot mode and vice versa. Uh, so, and, you know, like these armature pieces, like I, I feel like it's more helpful to kind of know how they fold up uh, just from going from beast mode to robot mode because of like following those specific steps to actually get them in right in the in the right place. Um, so yeah, it, it's a weird extra mode, but it does exist. Um, it's fairly unobtrusive. Like he does have tooling specific to it, but aside from like the weird little extra head kind of sitting behind his robot mode head, I don't think it really is that much to, to the detriment of the figure. So it, it kind of gets away with it. But yeah, uh, to go to robot mode, uh, we'll start off here with the legs, which I'm, you know, I just undid it, but you're pretty much doing the same thing. You just want to rotate them around like this and then actually flip the foot upside down to be the robot mode foot which is kind of a weird aesthetic you don't necessarily need to do that if you don't want to if you just wanted to have these feet but then he doesn't have as much heel support uh, because then you take these uh, extra pieces here and fold them down out to the side like that and do that on both sides here weird robot mode legs but honestly i, I kind of like it <laughs> i don't know it's a it's a weird thing to have the feet be upside down hands but eh, you know and then for the arms you just kind of straighten them out and then rotate around the uh the hand to be the robot mode hand. And then with these parts, uh, you want to bring them down like this. And actually, you want to bring them down and kind of rotate down them down to the side like this on the uh, on the ball joints there. And then you want to take these whole pieces, these kind of like sandwich in under the waist piece and just kind of bring those out just like this for now, because then that allows you to take this whole section with the like the shoulders and actually slide it down. Oh, actually, first you wanna take the uh, the baboon head and kind of rotate it part of the way down, and then you can bring that whole section and uh, and slide it down. It usually will kind of unlock this and that makes it easier, a little bit easier to do. And then you just kind of lock it back in, but um, you don't technically have to do that. And then just rotate the head down the rest of the way. And now with these parts, now that you've got them in this orientation like that, you wanna take the parts with a little missile pods on them and then rotate them down on that swivel just like that kind of bring this out to the side and then bring it up on this hinge right here whereas we had it on uh, bring it down on that hinge before so you want to bring it up like that and then on the ball joint here you rotate this up and then this hole will just go into the same peg that it pegged into with this hole before so you just want to bring that up like that and that's how it's supposed to look and then you kind of just bring these down uh, out to the side like that so again just rotate this bit forward fold up that hinge and then fold it up at the ball joint and peg it in. It's a lot of like weird little armature joints here, but they actually don't move around as much as you'd expect them to. Um, again, most like those joints are mostly used just for getting those guns out to the side in uh, in the weird extra mode. So if you're actually just going from beast mode to robot mode, you don't have to do a ton with them. Um, but yeah, there we have Baboom in his robot mode. And uh, yeah, he looks pretty good, I think. Uh, definitely a neat aesthetic. I like his like little, you know, Mr. T kind of mohawk here and his elf ears. He's definitely got a very mean looking face there. Um, I'd say the one part of his robot mode aesthetic that I'm not in love with is just these flaps kind of like sitting awkwardly over his shoulders, but they actually don't get in the way as much as you'd really expect them to. And again, I don't like that his little weird extra head is just kind of chilling out back here. Like you can hinge it down, but it, it's still just like totally visible from the top. Um, but yeah, in terms of articulation, uh, the head is on a ball joint here, so it can rotate around like that and kind of, you know, bend back and forth. Uh, the shoulders are still on ball joints. So they still do the same things they did before. If you move those shoulder pads out of the way, they can go all the way out to, you know, all the way around, only about that far out to the side. He's got bicep rotation, 
about that much elbow bend and the wrists are still in ball joints. Again, same as before. Uh, he's got a waist swivel here. Hips, again, same as before, can go forward. They can't really go back at all. They can't even go back up to being like totally straight, honestly, just because of the, uh, the butt plate does not have anywhere to go. So you kind of just have to like bend his knees a little bit to get him standing straight up. Like he's always kind of, you know, like it doesn't actually cause any balance issues. Like he's pretty stable with those, uh, the long heels, but uh, he does always kind of his le have his legs kind of like awkwardly bent. So he's standing forward. Um, but he's got a thigh swivel. Oh, and they also go about that far out to the side, you know, depending on how blocked they are by the, uh, the butt plate thigh swivel again, a little under 90 degrees of bend at the knee. And then the feet can only really tilt back, but the, uh, they move independently of the heels here. So yeah, you know, it, it works well enough. Um, I, the legs are a little bit limited, but given how his legs can't go like fully back, he, he kind of, you know, works it better than you'd expect him to, honestly. Uh, and then he does have like these holes kind of cut out on his thumb so that he could hold the gun that he came with, which again, would store in there and you could just use the slider to kind of like slide it uh, up and down. So, you know, that's it's nice that it actually had somewhere to go in all three modes, which are, well, yeah, well, yeah, all three modes. <laughs> just thinking that was a slip of the tongue at first, but no, that's accurate. He does have three modes, um, but yeah, no, pretty cool robot mode. Uh, look here in terms of comparisons in this mode. Here he is again with Kingdom Sideswipe, just so you can see what he looks like with an average size deluxe there. Uh, here he is with Lyo Convoy. Again, you know, technically he was kind of a Voyager class for the time, though he is a bit bigger than our modern Voyagers, but not by all that much. I think they look pretty good together. Uh, here he is again with the original Beast Wars Optimus Primal. So you can see what they look like. Again, fit bigger, Mega versus Ultra. Not too big of a difference there, but he definitely has a lot more going on. And then just for posterity's sake, here he is again with little little Bantor. <laughs> you can see the two, uh, two Mandrel slash Baboon guys with each other there. Um, but yeah, no, pretty cool figure overall. He's definitely uh, not one to sleep on. He's not, he's not the hardest to get in terms of a lot of the Beast Wars line. Like I, I see it for decent prices uh, every once in a while, but being able to get it for like less than 20 bucks was definitely worth it. I think he's a, a nice chunky figure and he's got a lot of fun stuff going on with him. I will have to find those accessories at some point just because it, it's a true rarity to have a figure, especially in the Beast Wars line that had weapon storage in both modes so it'd be nice to actually get those but yeah no oh, great figure i love it you know as bad as a uh, baboom but you know I, I know a lot of people like this as apache just because like apache actually showed up in media at all whereas baboom was just a toy only character i just really prefer the name baboom to apache i just think it's a really funny name but uh yeah that's pretty much all there is to him uh if you enjoy my videos make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing i do reviews every tuesday thursday and sunday make sure to check me out on my instagram account that's toys.n.art and without further ado here we have transformers beast wars baboom